Born in the home counties, educated at a convent, and never doubted that she wanted to be an actress. Today, she is one of Britain's most popular and acclaimed actresses, carrying off awards for her work on both the stage and television. She says there are three questions people always ask her nowadays. One is, why isn't she married? Two, how old is she? And three, is she a prize bitch? The last question is due to her superb portrayal of Margot in the TV series, The Good Life. Ladies and gentlemen, Penelope Keith. How old are you? Um, today is Saturday, isn't it? Yes. Um, 21. Why did you never get married? Um, I didn't have the time. And are you a bitch like Margot? On Mondays, yes. <laughs> oh, that's right. I got those three out of the way. Is that really that those are three questions everybody always asks? Yes, you always, 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 always. Yeah. Um, I, the age thing is the thing that they think you're being kittenish about. I feel very strongly that an actor, an actress, is whatever they present to the audience. So often people come up to me very nice and say, "Aren't you? You're so much. You look so much younger than Margot." Now that's lovely. Mm. I don't know how old they think Margot is. I think the moment you put up a number on it. People say, oh yes, she's either too young or too old for a part. Mm. It's not vanity then that you disguise your age. It's, uh, it's professionalism, is it? I say it's professionalism. It's probably <laughs> a bit of vanity too. <laughs> what about Margot? Because it's an extraordinarily popular character, isn't it? I wonder first of all why it's such a popular character. What do you think makes people associate with it and like it so much? I think because she's very, very honest. I think this is a very attractive tray. I don't think she's a prize bitch. I think she's got a heart of gold, and I think she says a lot of the things that we would like to say ourselves. The moment, I think, when she went to the hearts of the British public was a marvellous scene in the rates office when she listed the entire um, list of what the rates paid for, and she told them exactly why she would pay for everything, and then said she wouldn't pay for the drains because her drains were bunged up. <laughs> and um, they said, and the little man turned around and said, who do you think you are? And she said, I am the silent majority. And I think, <laughs> I think we all feel we're the silent majority, and here is a champion, yes. you see. Where, in fact, do you get your stage ambition from? Because you were sort of a home counties girl, weren't you? Yes. And there was little uh, theatrical background, was there? None at all, none at all. I was always taken to the theatre as, as a child. Mm. My mother always took me to the theatre's um, school holiday treat. I apparently came home aged five once from school and sat in the bath and said to my mother, when I grow old, I'm going to be either a nun or an actress. And she was a bit taken aback and said, well, darling, nuns can't wear pretty clothes. So I said, I'll be an actress then. And that was that. <laughs> <laughs> what was the... Well, I can see the actress, but why a nun? I was at a convent, and I think... <clears throat> I probably thought the, the, the habits were rather attractive then. Mm. What kind of a child were you? I mean, when you were at this convent, were you an sort of outward-going child? I would imagine not if you wanted to be a nun. Uh, yeah, there's a conflict. I mean, obviously yes, you were if you wanted to be an actress. Yes, exactly. I, I suppose I was, I was quite an outward-going child. I think I was probably a bit of an extrovert. I was a great talker. I, if, if anyone was speaking in class, they always said, stand up, who, who's ever talking? And I immediately stood up, because it was bound to be me, mm. even if it wasn't. Mm. Um, I suppose I, <laughs> I just knew I was expected to do that. What kind of a teenager were you? Uh, very tall, very plain, and very long. Um, <laughs> I suppose this was where the comedy came from, because I knew I wasn't going to get very far on my looks. And so I thought I'd better be the gag girl, I suppose, really. You are tall, aren't you? That's yes. the first thing that I noticed when you, because I'd not met you before. Yes. You know, it's normally actors and actresses are rather titchy people, aren't they, if you can generalise it. Isn't it funny how they're always much smaller than they are? Yes. When one sees these great Hollywood film stars, you think, oh, heavens, they're this big. That's right. Yes. And Bang goes my film career. And it's, it's, it's too late. It's, it's amazing. I mean, if you were in Hollywood, they'd have to dig a ditch for you to stand in. <laughs> You're so right. It's... When I first started on television, I did a play, I had a very small part of a secretary, and the director, when we were rehearsing, did all this sort of lining up, and eventually, after a long thought, he said, I'm not going to get you in, love, I'm not going to get you in shot. And I remember saying, well, I'll bend my knees. Yes. And I did. Yes, yes. I spent the whole three lines walking from one set to the other, aren't sort of, you know, crawling. Yeah. People always assume, too, if you do a lot of television work, I mean, newscasters, for instance, people are also astonished whether they're tall or small, or if they've got legs. That's right. Yeah, yes. they always think you've got wheels on if you live on television. That's right. Wheels where <laughs> legs ought to be. Going back to you being a teenager, um, were you... Um, you were gawky then, and unattractive, you Yes, say. I was very tall, you see, and, um... Were you unhappy? No, I wasn't unhappy about it, and it's what other people do to you. I remember as a child, always seeing aunts and uncles that I hadn't seen for who say, oh, hello, haven't you grown? It's the first thing they said. It's dreadful the way one says things like that to children. Mm. 
you know, immediately. They, they, they weren't setting out to be cruel, but it was their first remark, not, hello, don't you look well? It was, hello, haven't you grown? So my mother and I developed this defence mechanism whereby I'd walk into a room and say, hello, haven't I grown? <laughs> How difficult was it, in fact, to, because you were tall, to fulfil your ambition? I mean, did you, when you went to drama school and things like that, did you find that your height was against you? Yes, it was in as much as I was always given the character parts. As indeed, and indeed, when I started in the theatre, I always, I always got them, because if you were tall, you, you weren't young. It's, it's changed a lot now. This is 16, 17 years ago. It's changed a lot now. Mm. Um, so, but in looking back, it was very good because it meant one had a great bash at all the character parts of playing 19 to 90 mm. and therefore broadened one's, one's range early well, on. What were the most eccentric roles that you, that you played then in this period where you were coming through your, your role? Well, I remember my first job in rep, I, I played a, a pregnant lady. She wasn't that old. I then played an older lady and the following week I played a 19-year-old and I think I was less than 19 at the, at the time and a little boy came up to me at the local theatre club and said, Miss Keith, I think you are wonderful. I said, oh, it's very kind of you. He said, I think it's wonderful for a woman of your age to play a part so young. <laughs> <laughs> so I was established as an eccentric. Um, I can't think it was an amazingly wide range. I was very, very lucky early on. Yes. Were well, you very self-conscious about, about your height? In the... No, again, with other people. It's what they say, even fairly recently, about... Ooh, I don't know how, I better not put a date on it, because the actor might know. But he came, a sweet, lovely guy came up to me, and we were going to play a love scene together, and he sort of stood beside me and said, You are tall, aren't you? I have never in my life gone up to a man and said, You are small, aren't you? I think I'm going to try it now. Yes, <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> But I meant as a, as a teenager, I mean, were you, did it affect your relationship, say, with, with fellas? Yes, I suppose it did. It was very funny. I always ended up dancing with the smallest fellows in the room. I think yeah. I, they thought I was a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> their heads were about That's, there. Were well, there, yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Rather interesting. Well, pleasant. It is amazing. <laughs> it is amazing, actually, how many, how many tall ladies do marry small men. It is, Have yes. you notice that? Yes, Kissinger and his very tall wife, isn't that? That's right. Yes. And, and so these leggy beauty queens always marry That's tiny right. little used car salesmen. Have you That's noticed right. that? <laughs> <laughs> it's really unbelievable. <laughs> I apologise to all you scar <laughs> salesmen. <laughs> what, um, what do you do, in fact, though, about small leading men? I mean, is there, I suppose, in films you can fake it. On stage, is there any way of faking it at all? I really don't think it matters as much now. I, I knew I'd have kind of, not actually arrived, but was getting on when, having always been asked to bend my knees in shop, I was doing a series called Kate, and... I had a love scene with a chap, and at the end of the run-through, the producer took the actor and the director to a corner of the studio and started whispering to him and looking at me and whispering again. And I said, hey, what's going on? You know, if you're giving him notes, surely I must know it's about us. He said, no, 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 it's all right, it's all right. I discovered later they were asking him if he'd mind wearing lifts. I thought, oh, that's good. At last someone's <laughs> pandering to me now. Yes.